Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today's October 17th and it's a volunteer day here at the Community Plot. I'm almost towards the end of the series. This is the second to last video. The next one will really be on cleaning out the beds and getting them ready. But today I just wanted to show you what was going on on my plot, the final harvest, some harvest from back in September, I'll show you some work that I did on the paths to get them ready for the winter, and also do a little bit of a flashback just to just kind of show you how much really changed from the first day that I got this plot up until today. And I'm also going to do a quick video or a quick presentation on how to save tomato seeds directly from your garden. This is the walk down to my plot and these are some other gardeners gardens. You can see the winter or fall crops are in there. You can see chard and cabbages, lettuces. Some of the summer stuff is starting to die out but this plot still looks really really good. These were covered in blackberries and they're, you know, they finished out. And as we approach my area, you can see the cosmos way back there. I put in a lot of flowers to bring in pollinators and different insects. Overall, it's been a great season here. I'm very excited. I actually hope, here's a plot right next to mine. I hope to uh, purchase this one and expand next year, but we'll see how it goes. And here we are coming right up into my area. It's still producing nicely, still getting tomatoes. I'll give you a kind of a detailed tour through here. But you can see the kale back there. Tomatoes, eggplant, celery, chard, peppers, pea plants. There's the cosmos in a bag of trash. Right down the end of the path. I had two choices. One was in a low area. It had more sun, but it was really, really waterlogged. And this one gets about eight to nine hours of sun. When the trees back there uh, get their leaves, I'm gonna lose a little bit of it. But I'm excited. It's a 20 by 25 foot plot. It'll be plenty of room for me to grow some things that I can't grow over at my place. Um, and just really the experiment. So here is my plot. It was framed up in these four by four raised beds. The soil looks like it's dropped down. I'll have to replace that. It was um, fenced in with this green plastic stuff that's all dry rotted and yesterday so I did get some work looked like when I first got it so come October 17th we're really at the end of the harvest and like I said I'm gonna cut into September to, uh, make some sure of the, the diseases were under control enough that I still got a harvest but it's late September and things are looking pretty good minus the weeding which I'll do a cleanup and show you this plot after we go through it the tomatoes are still coming in these are tomatoes that I started uh, back in May and they're still producing nicely Coming across this way, that celery down there, celery leaf, some Swiss chard, some tomatoes. And here are my second generation tomatoes, so to speak. Those are golden nuggets. There's some nice ones I can pick in there. Another variety, I think that's clear pink. And you can see that they came First to size. Did is just harvest everything that's in there. Whole bucket full of tomatoes, green peppers, eggplants, more tomatoes, hot peppers, and a whole lot of green beans. So. Again, late September, it's fall, the garden's producing. What's on there is the uh, fungicide that I've been spraying on these to keep the leaf spot off. Of course, wash everything before you eat it, but doing nicely, even a bunch of times. So I'm gonna make sauce. Today, I have some green beans. I weeded out a lot of the bed. This is gonna be a three-part video. But you can see I took out a lot of the tomatoes. The weeds are pulled out, the paths have been cleared up. And it's starting to look that I did last good week. Again. As you can see in the path, that's all new mulch. Um, you really want to control your weeds in the fall, basically your paths and around your garden beds, so that come next year, you don't have to do a lot of weeding. So I put down a nice, at least an inch of mulch all over the place, and that's just to keep the weeds out of the areas that I'm not going to be planting. And that really does make a big difference. And one of the things that we get here is free mulch. So you know, you might, might as well use what you have some of the bailing. stuff that's still growing. October 17th, this is the latest that I've grown tomatoes. Right in there are Rapunzel. That was my third wave of tomatoes that went in. And part of the reason I did second and third waves is because diseases come and get my tomato plants. So I figured, you know, rather than battle plants to get sick, put in a second wave, put in a third wave. These are actually my Borghese, and they've been growing since uh, spring and they're still going, still getting sweet tomatoes out of there. One of the things that change with 
or the thing that changes with cold weather is the flavor of a lot of your vegetables. The lettuces and greens get sweeter, but so do the tomatoes if they do survive. This is my kale in Brussels sprout area. I've been battling white flies out of here, and you can see the leaves look um, kind of shiny, like they have something on there, and they do. I put in a stronger concentration of soap to control the white flies. Like there's none on here, there's a couple left in there. I don't know if you can see them. But I finally got it under control, but slowly had to raise the strength of the soap and use neem oil to get them under control. But these will grow completely through the winter. My green beans are still coming in, which is pretty cool. I picked some last week and ate them. I can get some out of there, but these are all really going to be left to um, turn to seed. Pea plants, until the frost comes I'll be able to get peas out of there. The peppers are doing pretty well. You can see the Tabasco peppers, I will be making hot sauce out of those. Coming down over to this area, this was my hay bale experiment, uh, experiment where I was growing um, green beans out of the, the hay bales. And you can see I'm already saving the seeds right here and you just let them dry on the vine and then you can just save those seeds and replant. Cosmos, zinnias, more peppers. All of this is really going to get harvested out. The sweet peppers I'll make in, into some kind of sauce. The hot peppers I'll probably uh, dry out um, or can in some capacity. Overall, great year. I learned a lot. I hope next year is better. Saving tomato seeds. If you check out my channel, I have some uh, videos on it and you can get more details. But you're basically squeezing the tomato seeds out and I put them right in to a jar like this. I started the process. Label it 1017 Borghese. And the reason that you're putting them in a jar is because you're gonna let them ferment for about seven days. I've done it as quick as five days, let them go sometimes up to two weeks. And you want them to ferment because that will uh, take care of the jelly, gel-like barrier that's around the seed. That, that little barrier, that gel pack that sits around the seed inhibits German uh, yeah inhibits germination and the reason it does that is so that the seed doesn't sprout inside the tomato so all you do is get some the tomatoes you want to save and the cherry tomatoes right at the tip turn it over squeeze it and you'll see the seeds will go right into the jar a little bit hard doing it left-handed but it'll break squeeze the seeds into the jar you can get some tomatoes that are rotted they do smell but that's okay that will really start the fermentation process make sure you label it 1017 Borghese if you don't have a lot of seeds in there add just a little bit of water not too much put the lid on let it ferment for five to ten days take them out You'll have to check out my other videos for that process. But you basically put them into a strainer, wash them off, put them onto a napkin and let them dry for about another week or 10 days. And then you'll have tomato seeds for next year. Right in here is celery leaf. It's uh, grown all summer and I think this will actually come back year after year. Definitely tastes like celery, a little bit bitter, but this is perfect for stews and soups. I've already used it. Um, not much maintenance and you can see everything you get out of there. I would definitely recommend this for making stews, um, putting in uh, soups, probably would go, go uh, well with chicken too. Swiss chard growing in there, that'll do well uh, through the winter. It can take a good frost and freeze and then eventually it will die out. Right over in there I have my lavender in the back, rosemary, thyme, that's going to be my herb bed. Let me show you the hot peppers, and I think that's all I'll do for this video, really. Oh, let me show you one more thing I just walked by. This is my final collection of tomato seeds for the Borghese, and that will just, again, ferment for about seven days, and then they'll be put on napkins to dry for another seven days. Hot peppers are over here. I've already started picking them. I have two kinds of hot peppers. Uh, one group that's really used for hot sauces, and one that I use for cooking. In here, I have hot lemon peppers. They are very hot. They have an initial citrus taste to it when you first bite it, but it's hot. That'll be used for a sauce. These are red Tabasco peppers, and you can see there's no stems. I like to wait till they get this red and make Tabasco sauce out of them. They'll just pool 
right off the stem of the plant. And those are orange habaneros. Let me show you the plants. Lemon pepper plant, there's still more on there. It's very prolific. If you like hot peppers, a lemon pepper is a great plant to grow. Here are the Tabasco peppers, and you can see all the stems stay on there. Wait till they get a nice dark red like this, and they just pull right off, and you can use whatever uh, hot sauce recipe you want to use to make them. In here, habaneros. I also have poblanos. You can see that they're different colors. These are great if you roast them in an oven, peel the skin off, take the seeds out, and you can actually eat them straight, put them on crackers, use them in dishes. I like to wait till they turn brown and red. They do become sweeter. This is a Baggio pepper. You can do the same thing with it. Again, this gets it to a nice chocolate color, and this is the best color. This is what you want them to get to if you're going to make a sauce out of them. However, we have a frost coming in the next couple of days, so I wanted to pull the peppers out. Oh, and here's Anaheim peppers, which I totally missed. Anaheim's they got a nice heat to them. I do use them in salsas and in cooking. So my sauce peppers, lemon, hot lemon pepper, Tabasco habaneros for cooking, poblano, the Baggio, and the Anaheims. Now, over on this side, I have my sweet peppers, although I was growing a Baggio and a Cayenne in there, and a Greek pepperoncini. they're hot peppers. You don't have to worry about planting hot peppers next to sweet peppers. They don't cross that way and create a fruit that's hot. They'll cross seeds and next year you might get a hybrid, but you don't have to worry about having a hot pepper next to a sweet pepper. Cayennes, these will get dried out, be hot pepper flakes. These are the Greek, either pepperoncini or pepperoncini. There's an extra N in there. I'm not sure if it's silent or not, but these are going to get jarred. The other sweet peppers will get picked out of here and I'll probably, like I said earlier, turn them into a sauce. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is my garden as of October 17th. The next video will be the final video and I'll just show you how to really clean up everything and get it ready for next year. Please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.